What's going on guys? You're watching The Shield Bearer of Faith. Thank you for being here. Had my first night back doing real police work yesterday and worked through the night. It was gross. It was rainy. It was a good evening. Um, was a pretty good day to re-enter the, the field because it wasn't so slam busy with calls that I couldn't you know, think. I had time to ask questions. I was riding with another officer for a while. Probably do that the next two days so that I can um, have time to ask appropriate questions about some changes to either policy or paperwork, whatever. But it was brought up a couple different times now. I've had a few people um, bring up the question of why I went back into police work. So we're gonna take just a few minutes and we're gonna chat some about that. I genuinely never thought I would return to this field. When I left it, I was really, really ready to leave it. And for the last three years, I've thoroughly enjoyed not doing police work. But if I'm being honest, I felt the nudging of, I guess, desire or craving maybe, especially when I was in Ukraine, of wanting to be the hands and feet that was actually interacting with people that needed help. So there's great purpose that I felt in training people to render aid, and hopefully delay death. And we got to deliver food in Ukraine. We got to do great stuff. I've gotten to be the hands and feet in other categories the last few years too. You know, I've, I've gotten to go to various locations for disaster relief. I was in Kentucky for about two weeks. One of those was a, a week with my family. We did a lot of um, debris cleanup after the tornadoes ripped through Kentucky a couple years ago. And then I, I got to go to Florida after, what was it, Ian hit, we were there a few days, um, got to go to Idabel, Texas. I've been all over the place. I've gotten to participate with a lot of baptisms, a lot of really cool stories with people, a lot of cool moments with people. But it does eventually not become tiresome, I guess, because I wasn't tired of teaching. It becomes more of a craving that I wanted to be the one putting my hands to the task of helping people again. In a more life and death way, I guess, or a more uh, immediate way. So that's one point, but there's others. Uh, the trigger moment for me, like the actual moment that the Lord used to convince me to go back, was a very unexpected one. I was visiting family in Virginia during Thanksgiving time frame. We didn't have any classes scheduled for that time frame because of that time of year. So we were visiting family. And I heard that an officer in the area that I used to work had been shot. And there hadn't been one in a long time. Thank God. And for some reason, God used that as the trigger for me. Not that, you know, I thought that I could change what had happened. I know that. But for some reason, it struck me different that maybe my new mission field was calling. And that's the key point here. That's actually the, the answer of what I've been feeling for a bunch of months, maybe even a year off and on. It's just a changing of mission field. That's actually what it is. It's not that I inherently had to go become a cop again. It's not really that. It's, I was being told one mission field had closed and another one was opening. And by the way, we still intend to teach classes. I have one in Indiana coming up and I'm looking forward to that. But everything has a season. The season of me training people as my full-time profession it slowed down to a point where my wife and I started praying, God, if you're shutting this door or kind of starting to close it a little bit, maybe you're leaving it cracked open. Well, what do you want me to do instead? We started praying that. And it became apparent that I was being told to come back to this. And I think it's funny because I use the words, I would never, like I would never go back to police work some years ago. And I'm dead wrong. <laughs> I have found that those words always come back to bite me. So be careful using those words. I'm glad to be back. I'm excited about it. I had a great night last night. There were things that happened that for sure uh, 
were ridiculous, a couple of things. That's just the way it is, guys. There's going to be moments where you say to yourself, wow, I can't believe that this is a police matter. But then there's others that are. There was a guy who is around 60 years old who was huffing paint thinner and had collapsed on the ground. It was raining. I told you it was chilly. It was just, you know, gross weather. He had collapsed on the ground from where he was huffing this stuff. And it messed him up real, real bad. I spotted him as we were driving by and we got out of the car. I'm with another officer you know, for a couple of days. I think I said that. We got out of the car, went and checked on him. He is real messed up. That guy could have died laying there. And the thing that you have to remember, or at least that I'm going to make sure I do my best to remember, is that is a human life, Right? We get very jaded about drugs or alcohol and what it does to people. And we can forget that those are still human beings, that Christ died for them also. So I took it away as like a win last night that this guy likely would have had a lethal issue. And that's my kids arriving back. Have a fantastic day. Be careful out there, guys. I'll see you later.